All right, I got some work to do today on the Kuberg Freerider, so I'm gonna have to make room in this really messy shed with tons of projects and uh, get to the bike. So basically I was uh, having range anxiety. So yesterday I took my 18 cell multi-star pack. I pulled the whole thing out and I popped in a 48 volt 13 cell 6P pack to try and get some more range. So I popped it in the bike, I plugged the thing in, and oh, what do you know, it didn't work. So I had to program the Kelly controller with my laptop down there, and I had to select a lower voltage for the uh, low volt cutoff to register this pack. So once I did that, I power cycled the controller, and uh, the thing came to life. Long story short, it was underwhelming, and it was super slow, and I could barely even pop a wheelie with all my might. So today I'm going to be swapping in another pack and it's actually going to go fast. Today I'm going to be popping in a 20 cell 4P. This is a Samsung 21740T pack. I originally made this pack for the Veloci and it was 20 cells long and it wouldn't fit in the bike. Last night I spent all night breaking it down into two 10 cell packs, retab welding it, spot welding it, and redoing all the balance leads so I can fit it into the Kuberg today. The one thing I did notice about these batteries is you charge them up to 4.2 volts and 3.7 or 3.6 is the nominal voltage, but it says the discharge curve goes all the way down to 2.5 volts, which is crazy low. So on a 20 cell pack, you can ride it from 84 volts all the way down to 50 volts. That seems insane. And you're obviously going to have tons of reduced top speed and power once it gets down that low. But uh, let's see how it performs and let's move all these bikes out of the shed and make some room to get this thing working. All right, that should give me enough room to get at the bike and take the top subframe off. So basically, to take the top subframe off, it's pretty easy on this bike. It's stripped down to bare basics. All you have to do is take off this one giant bolt in the front and then this one axle bolt in the back that goes right through. There's nothing else to it. It's an Allen bolt in the back. There we go, less than two minutes and the subframe is off the bike. And again, this bike is stripped down to bare basics. So if you actually have a Kuberg Freerider, you'll have to do some more work because they do have a controller cover over here with a power button and they put all of their controller wiring right up here in this front harness. So for me, I have nothing in here except a battery pack. This is 13 cell 6P. Uh, there's a guy selling these on eBay and on Endless Sphere for like 125 bucks. I bought two of them. All right, so the 20 cell 4P Sanyo 4D T-Pack drops right into the Kuberg frame. And these are 21700 cells, so it's a pretty close fit. But now that I know what I have to work with, it looks like I have maybe an eighth of an inch on each side. So I can build this battery up with a little bit of protection. Now I usually use uh, some type of plastic like this. I'll cut it to size and tape it on the outside of the pack to give the cells some protection. And then I'll uh, probably duct tape over the whole thing with some Gorilla Tape and put it back in nice and snug. Because if you can see here, I can slide this in the frame rails. So that's about what I can do on each side to protect this battery pack. All right, so I grabbed my sheet of plastic. I got my circular saw. I got the blade set really low. And it looks like uh, six and a half by eight and a quarter is what I want for my sides of my battery pack. All right, I got my two pieces cut for the sides. Let's get those mounted on and then I can work on the little slim corners and then get the thing all taped up and ready to go in the bike. All right, we got the battery pack all protected with the plastic sheathing. Now I just gotta go see if it fits. And if it does, we're gonna do our last wrap of tape over it and make it look pretty. All right, the battery's all duct taped up. We got the duct tape special going on. And uh, let's see if it fits in the bike this time. The battery is in the frame, and man, was that a really tight fit. It's not going anywhere, and I had to push it out of the way, cram it down in there, and move these balance leads out of the way. 
I mean, the balance leads, they're not ideal. So when I split it in half, the easiest way to spot weld it was to leave all the balance leads on the four outside corners. So that's why I just uh, took extra special care to route every wire on the balance lead so that they weren't overlapping each other. So nothing could short out. So while I'm installing this battery pack, I'm adding uh, my control panel. So I have a pre-charge resistor and a large marine switch to turn it on and off. So it was a little more detailed getting it wired in. So the whole positive has to run through this thing. And now I just gotta hook the negative up and the charge port and we are good to go. All right, we got the battery back in, the whole bike back together. I got the negative port right down under there, nice and taped up, everything uh, situated, the wires are all zip tied. Now all we have to do is turn it on and program it with the Kelly controller. So I need my marine switch here and I can put it in and turn it, but it's going to make a big spark. So I have this uh, pre-charge resistor here, I'm going to turn that on, make sure there's no spark, give it a couple seconds. And now I can turn on the controller. And it looks like we have a fault because we have an over voltage. So now I'm going to have to hook up the laptop and program the voltage. I got my USB cable plugged into the controller. And as you can see here, I had to turn the motor and battery current way down. So let's max these back out to 100%. And I think 50% is the max this one goes to. Uh, let's select next and I have to change the voltage so over volt we're gonna go to 85 because we're not going to be any higher than that and under volt we're gonna go to I don't know let's say 55 53 that's good so let's save these settings click finish and that's going to tell you to cycle the power on the controller. Uh, that light should be green next time we turn the thing on. Let's see if it works. Boom! Now we're green and the thing's ready to ride. Let's go take it for a test. Seems like my bike is pretty darn fast. I went from 18 cell to 20 cell and the thing's just like a monster. You gotta, you gotta keep the front end down on this bike. But uh, I just got to keep testing my bike out. Oh, shit. I forgot to put my low-volt cutoff buzzer in. I got to go back to the house real quick and get that. Because I'm curious if these battery packs are going to sag under load. This controller draws a ton of power. All right. I got my low-volt cutoff buzzer. I set it to 3.4 volts. Even though these cells can go down to 2.5. I'm just curious how much it's going to dip under load. So let's go back out for the ride. Mine's the Samsung 40T. It's 20 cell 4P. But mine are only four amp hour cells so i got 16 amp hour but i was just riding a wheelie or trying to pull up the front end and my low volt cutoff already beeped at 3.4 volts so they're resting at a little over four volts right now so this is the first ride i'm not really sure how it's gonna go but this controller it just draws way too much power it's like 150 amps and these cells i just don't think four p is enough i might have to end up building like a six or a seven p pack but for now, it's a lot better than the multi-stars, and we can get out and have a little more range, a little more fun before they die. Oh my god, I'm so embarrassed. I just went ripping up this big hill in somebody's construction property, and I just dropped my bike and ate it right here. Oh my god. I was trying to just like loop around, and I ate it. That was good. All right, well, I'm going to call this ride and this new battery pack a, a complete success. It seems to be lasting a lot longer batteries are at 3.85 but i have a feeling the voltage being higher on this pack it's 20 cell instead of the 18 cell lipo i think it actually works out to be about even because it's got two more cells but because these cells run all the way down to a much lower voltage than a lipo a lipo at 3.5 volts it's completely dead this one i can set my buzzer down to 3.2 and once it beeps i can still go all the way home because it can go down to 2.5 not that I would want to run it down that low because it's going to drop my top speed and ruin the life of the cells over a long period of time. But uh, I think 20 cells right where you need to be. Because with the LiPo, the 18 cell, it didn't sag as much and it gave about the same top speed. But I have more amp hours. These are four amp hour cells, so I got 16 amp hours. And I usually couldn't even make it to the reservoir. And today we've been riding for about a half an hour and we're already at the reservoir and we can still ride around and have a little more fun before the batteries die here. 
Look, I got all sorts of dirt and stuff in my pegs because I just dropped the bike. It's another thing I like about this bike. It's super nimble and small. And uh, if you drop it, it's not the end of the world. You just pick it right back up. It's like a mountain bike. That's e-bike Scott signing out. The Kuberg is back in action.